grapes which are grown in Burgundy, if you drink a white wine, it's Chardonnay. If you drink a red, it's Pinot Noir. And this is a Chardonnay that we bring in, uh, in Burgundy from a producer called Vincent Sharada, organic producer grown in a region called Merso, which is one of the most exciting uh, regions, uh, right? Like Burgundy has got, uh, you know, the winemaking is all stainless steel tanks, very terroir driven, you know, it's a chalky soil, it's very minerally. What is the food to drink with? I mean, I would drink this by itself. It's like the first wine as an aperitif. But if you're uh, having seafood like prawns, you know, in garlic sauce or something like that, it's, it's just an amazing match. It's a Côte du Rhône from the Rhône Valley. You know, France has five regions, you know, main five regions. One is Burgundy that we talked about. The second is Rhône. Uh, there is Champagne, there is Bordeaux, and then there is the Loire Valley. Uh, the Romans used to go to Rhône uh, to enjoy their vacations, their holidays. It used to be this phenomenal uh, Mediterranean climate after all the wars. And this winery comes from uh, a region called Gigondas. Uh, in the family since 1570, I think about it, 14 generations of winemaking. And when we visited them, they still make wines in Romo, Roman gallo vats, which are dating back to 16th century. In fact, they have a small room, which is dating back 1 BC. It's a Syrah and a Grenache beautifully balanced and uh, what can you pair it with? I mean, I think you can just drink it by itself. But if you have to pair it, I would say like a nice light chicken dish. Brancaya is one of my favorite, favorite producers. Uh, it is a story of a, uh, of, a, of a family who just came for a vacation in Tuscany and then they fell in love with the region and decided to buy a small property. And along with the property came the vineyards. And when they had gone uh, to this region, the winemaker, the current winemaker was a, you know, was a girl during that time. She was doing her architecture. And when she came to Tuscany, she said, Papa, I don't want to do architecture. I want to become a winemaker. I love this place. And since then, since last, uh, since 1983, uh, she has been making some of the most incredible wines. This is a blend of a Sangiovese, which is the main grape variety for Tuscany, and a, a little bit of Cabernet and, uh, and uh, Merlot. The beauty of wines coming from all these regions is they are so integrally involved with their food. Uh, one, of the, one of the easiest pairings would be like a pasta or a pizza. Like, you know, you have the tomatoes in the, in the pasta, and with acidity of the tomatoes and the acidity of this wine, it's just a beautiful balance. I think this is one of the uh, one of the most exciting food and wine pairing wines. My wine experiences are very integral to where I travel, and and the second region that I ever traveled to after after France was Spain, and uh, I think Spain is so underrated with France and Italy being the, the giants of winemaking scene. But I think uh, Spain makes some of the most exciting wines today. And we came across this uh, producer called Roda uh, from, uh, from Rioja, which is one of the most exciting, uh, one of the biggest, most important wine regions. And Rioja is actually 160 kilometers away uh, from Bordeaux, which is the French uh, top, top uh, wine country. And all their experiences of winemaking comes from Bordeaux. But Roda in 2000, in 1990, came into the scene and said, you know, we are not going to make traditional wines. We are going to make wines which is going to wake up the world and say, yes, you know, we are doing something unique, you know, and we are bringing out the Spanish terroir. And that's exactly what they did. They use less oak as compared to most of the producers from Rioja. I think today, if you drink Sela, it's a Tempra Neo, uh, which is one of the main grape varietals from Spain. And Tempra Neo is uh, very food friendly. Again, very similar to Sangiovese, but again, with Spanish wines and food, which is so integral 
you know the palayas and you know the seafood uh, the sardines you know if you if you go to spain and you have all these uh, you know all the tapas i think sangiovese just goes amazingly well with it This wine that we have is from Susana Balbo, which is one of the first women winemakers in Argentina. She started wine in 1980s, and today uh, making some amazing, uh, amazing Malbecs from Mendoza. Uh, Crios is one of her offerings, which actually means offspring. So the wine is actually dedicated to her, to her kids. Uh, Malbec is a full-bodied wine. you need to uh, it's considered as a food wine but as you say you know in india uh, you can have it before or you can have it with food and i would always say that you know pair it with something which is a little bit more fuller something like a rogan josh a nice big lamb dish uh, if you have to uh, because the fundamentals of food pairing is very simple you know pair the weight of the wine with the weight of the food so that you know nothing overpowers each other